go. Zero seven paddles, Roger, stand by. Uh, affirmative. Zero seven paddles, your wind is uh, green. A three five at a three five. Are you happy with the wind? Zero seven. And bridge LSO, say your flying course. In the summer of 1972, the first of a new generation of Canadian destroyers joined Canada's Maritime Command, East Coast. Her name was Iroquois. She was followed by Athabascan, Huron, and Algonquin. They are a new tribal class, creatures of the space age. Thirty years earlier, there had been another Iroquois, the first of another tribal class. summer of 43, in sub-infested waters off the coast of France, Iroquois and two other escorts picked up more than 1,800 survivors. One of a series of actions that established the tribal legend. In those years, the lifeline to all of Europe began in Halifax's Bedford Basin. Here, the convoys would form up, and escorted by Canadian corvettes, frigates, and destroyers, would begin their journeys knowing that half of them might never return. run, they passed 400 miles north of the Arctic Circle. The weather alone could kill a man in minutes, while survival in these freezing waters could be counted in seconds. But storms and icebergs counted as nothing compared to the threat of German U-boats. This was the beginning of anti-submarine warfare. Detection devices were primitive. They worked from open bridges. Ammunition was passed by hand. Fire control was by sight. The guns manually operated. Fire! In the Battle of the North Atlantic, the world first heard of the tribal-class destroyer. Radar to pilot. Contact. One, two, six. Today, we remain a country washed by three oceans, dependent upon billions of tons of shipping. Ours is one of the longest coastlines in the world, surrounded by waters incredibly rich in food, increasingly harvested by other large nations. Two, 
Our continental shelf is equal to 40% of the land mass of Canada and holds an immeasurable wealth of natural resources. In a hungry, polluted, and aspiring world, our national interest extends far beyond our shoreline. It is this world of the last half of the 20th century that the DDH-280 class was designed to meet. They are ships designed for peace as much as for war. Pollution control, surveillance of fishing zones, Arctic sovereignty, air sea rescue. Nearly 10 years of planning and design. The requirement was complex. A versatile peacetime ship with a superlative military capability. Department of National Defense Naval Architects, assisted by the National Research Council, developed a hull with the two prime requisites of an anti-submarine warship. A near-perfect resolution of speed and silence. Then unit construction, a modular concept for components which would be constantly evolving. Late in November of 1970, the first two ships were launched. Number 280, Iroquois, and 282, Athabascan. They were completely Canadian designed and built in Canadian shipyards by Marine Industries Limited at Sorel, Quebec and Davy Shipbuilding at Lausanne, Quebec. A quantum leap in naval design. A complete spectrum of space age technology. Displacement, 4,500 tons. Length, 425 feet. Beam, 50 feet. Draft, 16 feet. Powered by pure gas turbine technology. With auxiliary systems functioning, engines can be flashed up and the ship underway in less than five minutes. In the machinery control room, start up at the push of a button. The starting sequence is automated, controlled by a Bailey meter 760 system. Main power from two 25,000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney FT4 gas turbine engines, together delivering 50,000 shaft horsepower. But most of the work will be done with two cruise engines, Pratt & Whitney FT-12s, 3,400 horsepower each. They will drive the ship at a steady 17 knots. Synchronous, self-shifting clutches engage the two propeller shafts. They are linked to 14-foot inward-turning screws. The elapsed time from the push of the start button to assume power status can be measured in seconds. The gearboxes, the engines, and the propeller shafts never change their direction of rotation. Movement ahead or astern and variations in speed are achieved through variable pitch propellers, controlled by a hydraulic ram mechanism running down the center of the propeller shaft. Very little vibration is transmitted to the hull. Engines and gearboxes are mounted on a steel raft supported by rubber shock mounts. A Vulcan rubber coupling connects the power plant to the rigidly mounted propeller shaft. As a further safeguard in disguising ship's movement, 0 to 12 knots is achieved simply by changing propeller.